It's that time of year when people put together their best of the year list. And this year is even better because you get to do a best of the decade list. And since I didn't have a better idea, I decided to join in. As you can see, there's no real merit or criteria or even a set number for how I made my selections. I kind of just threw them together. After all, I am filming this in my room, which looks like it houses a 12-year-old. I would have done it outside, but it gets dark at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. We'll start with the sports moments and people of the past 10 years, including Terrell Owens, who entertained us in a variety of ways, including by doing sit-ups in his driveway. You had Usain Bolt becoming the fastest man of all time. Ron Artest fighting in the stands and Steven Jackson jumping him. True G status Steven Jackson achieved that night. I watched that about a thousand times when it happened. Uh, USA Basketball came back to claim the gold, which was good because I was pretty upset when they lost to Puerto Rico. Also, USA Olympic Basketball, YouTube moment, Vince Carter, teabag Frederick Weiss in the greatest dunk of all time. My college dorm mates and I uh, tried to replicate that by setting up a trash can in the hallway and jumping over it. It wasn't quite as good. Another YouTube moment was Ricky Hatton's life force being taken away by Mane Pacquiao. Star punch from Pacquiao, I thought he killed him. You had the steroids controversy in baseball, Barry Bonds, Roger Clemens, he tells the truth. A-Rod falling as far down as you can go with the roids and the cousins and the tomboyish blondes, and then rising back to prominence with the World Series and the Yankees. Shaq and Kobe feuded. Uh, this decade brought us LeBron James, the greatest athlete of all time. I'm really appreciative for that. We had the Giants beating the Patriots, who were undefeated at the time in the greatest Super Bowl ever, with one of the greatest plays ever, Eli to Tyree, the same year that Bill Belichick and Spygate happened. Some people called that cheating. I call it good coaching. Because what better way to prepare than to know what your opponent's going to do beforehand? Uh, Jose Luis Castillo and the late Diego Corrales fought in maybe the greatest fight of all time. If you fought in a fight that tends to go together. Uh, controversies. Plaxico shot himself. Michael Vick fought some dogs. Tiger Woods. That's still going on. Uh, you had Ocho Cinco, another wide receiver. We mentioned T.O. before. He started the Ocho Cinco News Network and got fined. Brett Favre. Gunslung me right here. Threw a lot of fun balls for a while. I got a chance to make fun of him. Then he came back with a vengeance this year and has my Wranglers in a bunch. I'm really excited to see how that finishes. Moving on to films. Films of the decade include, I don't know how to put this, but it's kind of a great movie. Ron Burgundy is the balls. One of the best movies ever made, Matt Damon. The best looking superhero movie ever made. Still my favorite superhero movie. Because Wolverine kills some dudes, and Nightcrawler teleports around in the opening scene. Magneto pulls the iron out of a guy's blood. That's awesome. Uh, some other movies, Indi Idiocracy, Windy City Heat, the funniest documentary I have seen. Some movies I saw once but really liked, Slumdog Millionaire, District 9, Inglorious Bastards, recently I have to see that again. Tarantino also put out Kill Bill this decade. You have to mention Judd Apatow. I thought Knocked Up is the best of his movies. Zoolander. Little Blue Steel. The Departed was really, really good, except for Jack Nicholson, who can only play Jack Nicholson at this point. Elf became a great Christmas movie. Blow I liked a lot. I think that's about it. Walk Hard. Walk Hard, gotta mention that. TV shows. This was crazy. That shark eating the seal, a whole bunch of great visuals. It made you a, I mean, one of my first HD TV appreciation moments. South Park remained awesome. Perhaps the greatest season in the history of television. Rick James, Prince, The Mad Real World. We miss Chappelle, you know, during these Obama times and Michael Vick and Tiger Woods. What is this like? I'm, I'm too famous. I have to go away. Come back, man. Other TV shows, Curb Your Enthusiasm, currently my favorite show at the moment. Currently at the moment is redundant. PTI, the best sports show. I was fortunate enough to be in the building when that show was in its first couple years. They invented that whole rundown thing that everybody bit off of. HBO 
get you hyped for any fight, even if you don't understand what these guys say and have no idea who they are. You'll want to see them punch each other in the face. I have to mention Chris Rock is the best comedian of the decade. I didn't really have another uh, category for that. I think Jackass was actually in the 2000s. I really enjoyed that a long time ago. I don't know if I still do as much, but pretty good. Uh, things were kind of revolutionized the way you could deliver news on television with The Daily Show and Colbert Report. They deserve a shout-out. And Real Time with Bill Maher is my favorite political TV show. Books, I actually do read some regular books. Malcolm Gladwell would be the author of the decade. This, did this even come out? I hope it came out this time period. Where do you even see where... Things you have to look at the copyright. Do 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 do, do 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 entertaining everyone. Two thousand, bang, nailed it. Uh, <laughs> Outliers and Blink, his other two books as well. Blindside by Michael Lewis, the one they made into the Sandra Bullock movie. I haven't seen that, but uh, the book is awesome. Comic books. There was Wolverine, Enemy of the State, where he wound up being brainwashed and fighting the X Men and the Fantastic Four. It's always good when someone is turned against others and you see the heroes fight each other like in World War Hulk where the Hulk was banished to space by Iron Man and Mr. Fantastic amongst others and, and came back for his vengeance and he took it and he took it good even uh, leading to some things like him smashing Mr. Fantastic like so you know and dragging the thing in Mr. Fantastic around like trophies that was neat. You had Messiah Complex. Complex. It's not really that complex to say. But Messiah Complex with the X-Men. There was only like 200 mutants left in the world because of some, I don't know, House of M or something they called it. And a new mutant baby was born. So this was about trying to rescue and save that baby. It was pretty awesome. Astonishing X-Men was also excellent. Civil War was good, uh, except for the ending. I, I like the concept more than the final execution. But that was good in comic book world. In music, I didn't bring those to me. Let's see what I have here. Two artists really uh, carried the decade for me. That would be Kanye West, who you can't get much better back to back to back to back with your first three albums than the college dropout, late registration, which had crazy production, and graduation. The other, Jay-Z, um... He put out The Dynasty, The Blueprint, my favorite album of all time, The Black Album, Blueprint 3, all in this decade. You also have to give kudos to the three-headed aftermath monster, The Chronic 2001. I remember back in high school. Wait, did that, that didn't even come out. Why does it say 2001? It didn't come out in 2001. I was in high school before 2001, so that's eliminated. Get Rich or Die Trying did uh, come out in the 2000s, and I don't remember an artist hitting as hard as 50 Cent at the impact he had when he first came out was huge. Uh, I think his his run's a little bit over. Eminem was big in the decade as well. I'll put the Eminem show as his best release. You also had Justin Timberlake, Future Sex Love Sounds, and Justified were both excellent. Ghostface Supreme Clientele, one of the best releases. Green Day, American Idiot. I never would have thought that Green Day would be the band that would still be around nowadays and would have blown up. Like when When I Come Around was out when I was in seventh grade. But their, that last album, that American Idiot album, was so good that they tried to duplicate it with their last album to varying degrees of success. Joe Budden's Mood Music 2 was my favorite mixtape. You have some producers that deserve credit. Uh, the Neptunes, they were responsible for NERD, a lot of hits. And uh, The Clips' Lord Willen, which was excellent. Just Blaze helped with Jay-Z and Rockefeller Records. Timbaland put out a lot of cool stuff, including Future Sex Love Sounds. And he did some cool uh, country hip-hop fusion on Bubba Sparks' album. I know a lot of people don't really check for Bubba Sparks, but some of the production on that was crack. Lil Wayne needs to be mentioned because he appeared on 150 million songs in the past 10 years. Young Jeezy put out a lot of quality material, The Recession being my favorite. Pearl Jam was still kicking it. Um, some songs that have to be mentioned, White Stripes, Seven Nation Army, one of the baddest songs ever, uh, M.I.A., Paper Planes, and MGMT, Electric Feel, that one makes me want to dance like that. Anyway, I think that is all for the Lundberg.me haphazardly thrown together, uh, Best of the Decade Awards. 
One thing that will not receive an award for the best of the decade is this video blog. I should probably just stop talking now because many of you have probably clicked away already. Good night, everybody.